So welcome to another Run, Think, Shoot, Live Classic of the Month. Uh, this time I chose a sequel to one I played uh, almost four years ago now for uh, Classic of the Month. And that was the Xeno Project, so this is therefore the Xeno Project 2. And I think this opens with a cutscene of where we left off from the cliffhanger of uh, part one. So here we go. They had that awesome rocket set piece at the very end. And then I launched into orbit and got captured. And actually, I might need to fix the FOV as soon as we're done with the uh, cutscenes here. Well, Adam, you can always uh, sign up for the Twitch alerts too. They, uh, you know, pops up on your phone when somebody goes live. Well, it looks like we won't be working together. And that was right where I killed myself with snarks in the last episode. <laughs> Let's call that a cut ending. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so this is by the same uh, mapper and, and team that made the Xeno Project, obviously. Mr. White, um, who I don't think did much for Half-Life or the Half-Life engine, but he was uh, an experienced Quake mapper, so he had a pretty, a pretty good head start in terms of knowing the engine and uh, uh, map entities and things like that. This pack was released in November 99, so just about a year after uh, Half-Life came out. Oh, I must be in the brig. There I am. All right, let me fit, fix the uh, FOV. Yeah, so I've got it set to ultra wide. There you go. Let's. Okay. Oh, wait, I think I can move this. It sounds like it's, there we go, yep. Aha. Freeman, you startled me. I see you've escaped from your cell. You'll find me and my comrades sympathetic to your cause, but we'll have to keep a low profile. Here, take these weapons and supplies. I'm way ahead of you. Uh, okay then. You do that. Well, I guess it's downstairs here. Unless, oh. Oh, I have no suit. Okay. I gotta be careful. I think I start out for... Nope. Quite some time with no suit. Let's see if I can get through here. Oh, there's nothing here anyway. Yeah, so it's at least one of the advantages of Half-Life 1 over Half-Life 2 is that you can actually change weapons with the mouse wheel without a suit, which you can't do in Half-Life 2 for some reason. Well, let's let everybody out. It's a jailbreak. I don't really want to go that way, do I? I was hoping he would come out and they would, like, kind of, you know, infighting. <laughs> uh, it doesn't quite seem to be the case. Ouch. There 
executed. Last Ouch. Who's shooting me? You? Yeah, so these are not very attractive textures, <laughs> as Adam uh, kind of pointed out here. Um, I don't think these are even used in Half-Life, are they? This sort of riveted metal plate texture? It's not terribly attractive, even as far as Half-Life textures go, which is obviously... Not awful, but, you know, dated, let's say. Well, convenient vents connecting all these. I guess we just have to lead the scientists to the, uh, to the uh, retinal scanner, right? The lighting in here is really flat, too. Um, all you have is these yellow, orange-yellow lights above, and it just casts everything in this sort of sickly... Like those, uh, what is it, mercury lamps that they use on streets? That has that, like, awful yellow-orange... Yeah. Um, not an attractive look. Glad to have... ah, you've been wounded. Let's try this. I have? I can't even see my health. Thank you. That was a shortcut. I wonder if he can get me through... Oh, I can't get him in there. It's all vents. Okay. Yeah, more kind of flat lighting. This, I mean, I don't mind the sort of bluish fluorescent lights here, but there's too many of them. You, you kind of want to pick, you know, two or three spots where you'd have highlights. That way you don't get just monotone um monotone lighting on the floor that that's, maybe i complain too soon we've got a bright green over here i can't even reload the pistol which means i'm really low on ammo that's the weak that's the other weakness not a you can't see your health b you can't tell how much ammo you have but we quickly get a suit, thankfully. Not a huge fan of that, but... Yeah, are there turrets here? I actually don't remember this mod very much at all. I, uh... Xeno Project 1, I remember, with the rocket. Um, Xena seems to be a recurring theme here. you like Xena too? I love her. I think she's beautiful. Okay. Well, custom voice acting clearly. That was pretty good voice acting. Not so sure about the scientist, but hey. Don't want to break back into the brig, honestly. And I think this just leads me. Yep, that's where it was. Yeah, so typical of, you know, the first year after Half Life released. Um, pretty boxy, simple shapes. I mean. People actually did have to be careful about our speeds back in the day. <laughs> oh. A little more interesting shapes here. Higher ceiling. I'm not sure about the flashing green light here. It's a little overdone, but... Yeah, nice bit of detail here. Not too much, but... Uh, 
some misaligned textures, but let's we'll overlook that. Ooh, crossbow ammo. That seems promising. So I, I assume we're on that large sort of Star Destroyer-ish yeah, ship. Yeah. That uses standard half ply textures. <laughs> so yeah, people really stretch these textures. Um, a lot of them are flexible enough to, you know, to be used in things like this. You want to make a spaceship, you want to make something that we didn't see in Half-Life. You just got to be a little creative. There's my crossbow. No, I'm on... I should be on hard, uh, medium. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm on medium. Okay, so I think these both lead to... Yeah, so this was just kind of a big um, circular area. This was the guy I shot through this door, um, you know, a few minutes ago. All leading to this choke point. Oh, wait, an assassin's, jeez. Who are not really put to good use here. Right, if you're going to use assassins, you want cover and you want height for them to jump. Um... Unless this was just like a, a warning shot. <laughs> um, I think that could have been done a little better. If you're going to put assassins in the mod that early. Freeman, you're still alive. You'd better make your way to the bridge. It's the only way you're going to stop the government and their sinister plan. I've got to get to... So the Vox talked off or over him, but he... Got to get to the bridge to stop some evil plan, of course. So... Oh, he didn't go down easy. I am out of pistol ammo. That's just great. How I put a lot of bullets into that guy. I'm not gonna get, stay here forever and get you know 50 health from these soda. Wow, that guy has some interesting hitbox or something on him. I don't know. You'd better make your way to the bridge. It's the only way you're going to stop the government and their sinister plan. Yeah, right. First and for software mode, you had to stay under 800 world polygons, right, in any scene, or it would stop rendering beyond that. And even if the author didn't, a lot of people in... So there's a comment in the chat about maybe the author didn't have a 3D card. And that's probably true. So this guy is major trouble up here. Yeah. Here, have some snarks. Well, I seem to come out of that with less health than I did the first time, but... Alright, let's see what I can do here. I heard more shooting from somewhere. Uh, Archer, this is a cut monster from one of the... From Half-Life. I don't think it was ever used, unless they... Did they put it in Zen at all, maybe?
I'm not sure I got that high enough now. So these also are pushable somehow, but they don't seem to move for me. Oh, I've got to push one over to, to jump on this, uh, yeah. I see what I need to do, I'm not sure I can quite do it. But... There we go. Oh my. That was really close range for a grenade. <laughs> oh. Nobody saw that. Yeah, I had a TNT 2, I think. I don't know if I got the first TNT way back in the day. And it was it was really like, um, you know, light and day or, or, or day and night. It was just how smooth it was. It, especially, I remember not just the graphics, but the turning. So uh, in software mode, you like, you turned in like increments of, I don't know, 16th or something of a circle it was really clunky compared to this so if I were smart I oh I hear assassins again Jesus if I were smart, I probably would have gone back. Yep. Oh, wait, they just spawned. That's lame. There's one spawn right behind me. That is just... That's cheating. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like pulling that... So I make maps, too. I don't like pulling that trick unless it's uh, like a... An area you have to travel back over. And, you know, several minutes have gone by. Not just five seconds I turn around, there's somebody behind me. That's just not, not very cool at all. And what would be really cool is like a health pack. Not just a health pack, but a health charger. Hey, I think that's my, uh, that's my ship there. The little capsule that I got captured in. Death imminent indeed. Yep, told you. Uh, sorry, we gotta wait for this cutscene to kind of unfold there. IRQ assignments, yeah, right. Some things have improved. <laughs> Grenade this guy as soon as he opens the door, I think. There we go. Oh, and the guy behind me got me. It'd be nice if I didn't have eight health here, but whatever. Well, I guess I just dropped down here. Hopefully not to my death. Yeah, I can land on these crates at least. All right, another pet peeve. Some of these crates are clearly breakable, some of them are not. Crap. What's that? Oh, I really need health. Where's this guy?
It's going to be t- turn out to be like the long night, isn't it? <laughs> it's a mod I played. Oh crap! I held this grenade way too long. That was a mod I played a few years ago, and it was just not balanced. I played on hard, which was probably my my first mistake. But did I get him? No, there he is. There we go. I guess we go back up here? Oh, fantastic. I saw a vent. There we go. That's our... That's why these crates aren't breakable. But you gotta make a metal or something then, right? Yeah, so there's one thing that bothers me. It's it's inconsistency in and uh, in things like that. Wait, how do I even? Is that jumpable? I don't know if I can make this last one. Oh, there we go. Just. Yeah, Q two the uh, Q compile tools did support texture lights, but. I don't think quake mapping did. So if these guys, if Mr. White was mostly from a quake mapping background, um, he might not have really been using uh, texture lights. So you can tell they're point lights because of their circular um, cast on the ceiling, which means a little bit below this fixture, there's going to be a point light sitting in there, which just kind of radiates light in all directions. The texture lights in Half-Life gives a much more natural feel to the lighting, especially like in a, fluorescent lighting situation um, in offices and, and things like that. Um, yeah, the the other option in, is is he might have, you can only um, switch off lights that are point lights with the old tools. So unless this was going to, is going to, you know, become dark at some point. Um, yeah, I don't know why he would have used point lights specifically. Oh, hey, Zick, how's it going? Yeah, I just started and I'm already really low on health, but what are you going to do? Here we go, finally. Thankfully, the author has been generous with uh, AR grenades. Oops, come back here, you. So I think this was just left here so I could actually jump up on these crates and get the grenades. I assume this is the other, just the other side of the door I just tried before. Let's actually make a save here. Yeah, that's the... They've always been fun, it's funky with the pushables, right? If you use it and move to the side, which is... A, you know, a big trick for um, speed running too, right? People use and I think press to the side and let go, and they go flying instead of the um, instead of the box. It's a common trick, um, especially to cross that um, that canal at the end of um, Unforeseen Consequences with the uh, bull squid down below. You know, everybody uses that trick to cross that canal if you're if they're speed running. Oh, he didn't even react. Is there like a wall? Okay. Uh oh. Is that a cutscene coming up? I see the G-Man in there. Oh. Well, the. I don't know what's going on with the lighting here. That feels really unfair, though. <laughs> I assumed it was overhead, which is why I was kind of ducking here. Um, that's not very cool. I mean, a lot of these old packs weren't forgiving either, as you can see by my health. <laughs> yeah, but this was not just devilish. Like, he clearly put some kind of 
light blocker here or or yeah almost to make this in darkness which is fine but it shouldn't have been pitch black like that that's that's a little unfair i think but live and learn oh uh oh Custom voice acting. It's, I mean, it's well done. It's not G-Man, but it's well done. Uh-oh. Klingon ship. I think also standard Half-Life textures, right? Those are Zen textures. We're doing so well. Oh. Can you uh, dish out some health here? Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. I just needed the health. Yeah, so this is the same hallway. That's why he used point lights, right? You had to turn the lights out and light up new ones. And you, you back in the day, you couldn't do that with texture lights. I feel assassins may be coming, but... Well, no, these are probably different maps. These wouldn't have been the same map. I don't know. No, these are the same maps. Yeah, that's why. So I was sadly right. <laughs> I have to retrace my steps in not quite total darkness, but the lights are off. The main, the main lights are off. Oh, crap. Forgot I have a crossbow, right? Yeah, so the other sign to me that kind of reinforces that, uh, you know, we had former Quake mappers um, working on this is the use of colored lighting, um, right? Quake didn't have colored lighting, really, and uh, certainly not a mixture of colors like this. So I, I don't want to paint too broad of a, a stroke here, but, you know, there came to be a point where people just abused colored lighting because they could do it um, in Half-Life. And a quick might have eventually gotten those those tools, but they didn't have it back in the day. So once they got their hands on colored lighting, they kind of tended to go a little overboard, in my opinion. So. so the red is, you know, clearly emergency lighting, but I would have also... I would have offset it a little bit with, I don't know, a little bit of blue or, or uh, yellow or white or something here or there. Just really subtle, you know, like a glow of a monitor or, uh, you know, make the uh, health kits glow a little bit instead of bathed in the, just the sickly red. It's a nice effect, though, to kind of retrace your steps in 
a changed map, you know, kind of darkness. Uh, it doesn't look very... Oh, this is a ladder, huh? Yeah, any kind of different color highlight, such monotone like that. You can have it for a little bit, but I think you really want to... Um, here, like this. This effect is nice, right? You've got the red flickering lights, and you've got kind of a flickering light down the hallway. Oh. And you've got the flames from the Garg. Okay, well, I'll probably be seeing him later, seeing as how there's ammo for me down there. Oh, I'm really low on... Jeez. Machine gun ammo. Oh, I may be... Maybe getting into that room a lot quicker than I thought. Is there any way through here? Yes, there is. Uh, I think we're going to try this first. Assuming we actually have to defeat the guard here. Rather than bypass him like we do in Half-Life. Yeah, so in Half-Life Standard, of course, he's used as mostly like an environmental hazard. You're not supposed to kill him. Um, although you can in, in most of the places, if not all, that you that you encounter him. If you have enough of the explosives in um, power-up, you can actually kill the Garg without um, uh, frying him in the big electricity generator area. But he's mostly set up as environmental hazard, kind of like um, something you have to defeat using the level like uh, the airstrike or um, or the generators in power up but on standard you know settings he's actually not that tough if you saw three rockets and two satchels well and and the uh, the grunts got a couple hits on him with the grenades so that that helped a lot actually And some, there are more grenades down here, but I can't imagine getting these grenades with the Garg still in this room. That would be that would be a death sentence, I think. Uh, did I miss a switch for this? Is there a switch for this? Ah, there we go. I heard a baby crab back here. See you later. Oh, crap. Nope. Done with you. Absolutely the worst enemy in Half-Life. Oh, 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 no. I almost caught it again. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Well, I should have saved then. I guess I gotta take the Gargon again. Huh? Oh, no. Yes, I do. Yeah, so he gets one grenade hit on him. The bullets don't do anything to the guard, but, um... Explosives and energy weapons do, so he helped a little bit. Yeah, I should have saved after killing the Garg. I mean, he's not much of a threat from... Now, you play on hard, and maybe it's a lot more difficult to take him down with these weapons that you have. So I actually did the same thing with the Garg in um, Xeno Project 1. Got it. it. Outside the rocket, I took him down with, um, I think it was the Egon and explosives, rather than uh, anything in the, le rather than just avoiding him or anything in the level that allowed me to uh, 
to kill him. And, uh, you know, I actually think that's kind of good. Um, Valve allowed modders to kind of do what they wanted. Um, if you uh, if you wanted to have him as a hazard, you could. If not, you, you could let the player just battle the guard. And... it right at the end. Speedrunning strats. Yep, I'm using you as bait. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh that much. Alright, well, this is a map after my own heart. I love snarks. I love how how much of a double-edged sword they are. <laughs> Freeman, there you are. We better make our way to the escape pod near the engine room. Sure, you lead the way. Ooh. How do we get that? That's how I get that. Nice. Uh, you just stay here and watch. Well, I missed, but still got him. Yeah, so the lighting has gotten a little more varied here, which is good. Um, it's still kind of the, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this was early, early Half-Life maps too. They weren't terribly pretty. Is that the word? I don't know. I mean, oh, ouch. I mean, honestly, a lot of Half-Life wasn't either, but they strive to use, I think, at least realistic looking lighting in a lot of the areas. Not Zen necessarily, but, right, most of Black Mesa was supposed to be I don't know, a realistic depiction of a government office for whatever, or, or a government lab. And a lot of it had real, you know, office complex had, had realistic lighting. Ooh, yeah, secret. Another thing I like about Quake Mappers, right? They're not afraid to put, like, little devious, devi kind of deviously hidden areas like this with a goodie behind them. And I probably, since the first time I'm mentioning it, I probably missed, like, 12 secrets already. Oh, not really a secret, but this is the way to progress. Is this the way forward, maybe? Yeah, I thought this was going to be another kind of another corner secret area. But that might be actually be the way forward. Um, let me explore this area a little more, then. Maybe there's not much to it. So long, Freeman. Jerk Looks taking the like last uh, going down with the ship. escape pod, of course. Oh. Wait, is there actually something I can shoot at here? I thought there would be another uh, cannon over here. I really kind of wanted to shoot down his escape pod. Did I miss my chance?
Yeah, I can shoot, but there's nothing there to shoot, sadly. Alright, well, back to our... Oof, where the hell was that? Back down this way? Nope. <laughs> Oh boy, I really need to save more often, huh? Sorry, guys. Freeman, there you are. We better make our way to the escape pod near the engine room. Yeah, it is lack of auto saves, but still, I should be more a little more vigilant in my saving. So yeah, long, yeah. Freeman. What the heck is that guy doing? be able to shoot at the G-Men's pod, but <laughs> I can't seem to be able to get to it. Or see it, I should say. So I guess the pass, path forward... This is the Xeno Project 2. As it so subtly says at the bottom of the screen. Early Half-Life mod. No, it's 21 years old. Not quite new. So, I think down this way, right? Oh, that is particularly evil. So this seems to be the way forward. The only th the only thing really hinting at it oh, is the uh, barnacle that you see there. Otherwise, you'd kind of have to really hunt around to find this, I think. Yeah, so I don't know, about four years ago, I streamed the Xeno Project as Classic of the Month. This is the sequel. But yeah, it, they're both from 1999, so they're both really old. And Head Crabs and Vents. Thank you very much. I'm not a big fan of the huge pulsing light either, I think. Yeah, I think that's overdone. I'm going to guess I have to start up the fan. Yeah, so more kind of um, just solid red lighting here. I definitely would want to offset that with anything. Blue, yellow, not orange really. Blue, yellow, white, green even, a little bit of green. Just somehow make it not so monotonous. Or monotonous probably isn't the word. Monochromatic is the word to be, uh, to be accurate. Decent amount of vertical combat though. Something not a lot of early mods had. Also, they're never he's never given me um, machine gun ammo, really, except where I pick up off the grunts, so it doesn't really encourage the use of the uh, machine gun very much, the MP5.
So this maze is going to lead me right back to the fan, maybe? Sounds like it. Oh. He's also not afraid to use just about every zen alien. You don't see baby headcrabs often. Um, with good reason, in my opinion. They're awful, but in small numbers they can be okay. Oh, they're going to keep spawning? Oh. Yeah. Get me up there. Crap. Get me in there, get in there. Oh my god. This is awful, I have no control. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This time we're gonna get it. Yikes, that was awful. Yeah, so that bit with the respawning, then I would respawn, what, four times was it? I mean, they finally stopped, but... Jeez, maybe it, they might have stopped when I broke the vent. Probably should have done that first, huh? Finally gave me a whole bunch of machine gun ammo. Well, my guess is we have to join the uh, tractor beam here, but we'll see. Now, is it actually going to float me up, or do I have to, f have to ride something up? There we go. Oh, he's stealing all the cargo, so I can just board that way. Nice. Kaboom. <laughs> oh, the old iris door. Nice. Sick, if I'm not mistaken, you had one in your map, didn't you? <clears throat> in your upcoming uh, tower map, I mean. Yeah, that crate guy. Oh, I'm... I thought I was taking damage. I think I was. Yes. I'm taking electrical damage. I just... It's going to kill me before the... Did you see that? It just went down to four health, and I think I died during the camera scene. Yeah. I think I just broke things. <laughs> Let's, uh, we're going to turn on God mode so I don't die during the, uh, an iris door like this right here. This should close in a second here.
Yeah, you see my HEV going down? I don't know if you can see that. I'm somehow taking damage during the cutscene. And then it's going to start to hurt me too. Although I, now I do have God Mode on, so it's not going to actually kill me. Well, sometimes you get problems with these old packs, especially once Steam came around. Uh, they just broke things like this. So for a cutscene like this, you still have the player existing somewhere near the scene, usually in like a black box or something like that. But wherever I happen to be, I'm taking damage. Probably from these guys. Okay, now we'll turn God Mode back off. <laughs> and save. Actually, you know what? I bet you I was getting pinched by the door. This door right here. Right? You saw it pinch the crate during the cutscene. I bet you it also pinched my foot and was, uh, uh, was causing damage. You know, taking me, causing me to take damage. Um, let's see. Oh, am I going up, maybe? This is quite the vertical room. Um, I don't see any way to... That didn't do anything. I can't tell if there's any kind of door around here. Oh, well, right, it was electricity damage. They were just probably just shooting me. Um, am I shooting something here? Like. Oh, okay, here I can jump. Um, can I, though? Yeah. It still seems to be... more or less normal gravity, though. I can make that jump, I guess. I can jump this. Uh, this is the only way I can think of to go. Um, oh. Except I can't reach up here. No. Um, I don't know. Well, I really want that ammo, but I'm not sure I can get to it. Um, yeah, I don't really have any good idea. Wait, is this like an elevator or something? No. I just don't see much, except... No. This should there be? I, that's what I would see. If there's supposed to be lower gravity here, then I could see jumping up these crates and probably making it to the next level up here. Um, it's possible I broke something in trying to survive the cutscene, but I doubt it. Yeah, that's not doing anything. Um, yeah, if there's supposed to be lower gravity here, I can, I can lower it myself. Um... kind of what I'm assuming. If I'm if I meant to make this jump and then that jump
Right, what's the gravity command? SV gravity, is it? I think we're going to have to make some assumptions about the design here. So I think, I think that's right. I think this is supposed to be lower gravity. I'm not sure if I've got the right value or not, but. I can't quite make that, can I? In any case, I'm not sure I can use the gravity to jump up to the next level, unless it's supposed to be so low that you can actually make that jump. Like so. Not quite like so. Like so. I may have gone overboard. <laughs> After the cutscene, I'm on top of the vines, like up here? Or like further up? Either way, I think we got it sorted. Um, I still have really low gravity. Can you tell if low gravity's on? Yes, here. Okay, so apparently this is where I should have woken up from the cutscene. Or, um, you know, faded in from the cutscene. On this ledge rather than down below. Which would, yeah, that would have been a killer fight, right? There was... I fade in and I'm being shot by two slaves and two grunts. That's... A little bit extreme, but is there supposed to be low gravity? That's what I'm curious about. So I can, but I don't see anywhere else to go. Whoops. Yeah, let's maybe tone that down a little bit. Huh? I think that we found the path forward here. I'm still not sure how low the gravity is supposed to be, but we at least unbroke the mod <laughs> for the moment. Um, that was wonky. Okay. So let's press on. Hopefully the gravity won't really affect... There is low gravity. We just don't know how low. I think I've got it too low, but that's all right. Right, if there's a trigger gravity brush, uh, Adam's pointing out in the chat, then I, since I uh, clearly woke up in the wrong point in the after the cutscene, I'd never triggered the low gravity. So, I yeah, I don't know whose fault that is. Probably Steam, to be honest, if this worked back in the day and doesn't work now. That's all I can say. And the gravity's off, of course, yep. I heard a controller somewhere. Oh. Something, uh-huh. 
I don't really want to. Nope, nope. Uh, didn't really want to go in there just yet. <laughs> well. Ah, okay. Yeah, this must be low gravity. I wouldn't have been able to survive this with uh, normal gravity. So we're still supposed to be on that new ship. And this is very, you know. Zen type textures. Hive hand. Uh, not sure what we're doing here. crabs well I think the baby head crabs just got the scientist wherever he is <laughs> oh geez I did not see the giant head crab <laughs> Hope this works. There we go. Piece of cake. Oh, there's our scientist. They are the worst. Baby head crabs are the absolute worst. So all kinds of crates are breakable, uh, just depending on where they are. That's a little frustrating. You you, you really want to be consistent in um, in which crates are breakable and which aren't. <laughs> so a lot of areas right have a uh, kind of symmetrical layout so i knew there was going to be an alien grunt over there once i found one here that's fine you know sometimes but you don't want it to become a pattern in your mod i would really have uh, mixed things up a little bit more something. Yep. Yeah, I don't... I'm glad they're not in Half-Life 2. They... No. <laughs> or Alex. Can you imagine? If they were in Half-Life Alex? No way. No, baby head crabs are the, are the worst. Oh, there's a whole bunch of bad guys waiting for me out there. Wish I had seen them a couple seconds earlier. But what are you going to do? That's what you're going to do. I see you. Oh, they're spawning again. No fair. No fair. Cutscene again. The sort of the health has kind of been sporadic in this mod. I'm hanging out at you know twenty five health again. Oh, these guys are up to no good. 
They seem to be shooting in the middle of the Indian Ocean. That won't that will not do. No sir. I need health. These guys are going to get me at long range. thought about playing gunman maybe is the answer it's not really a mod and we don't really think we have it on um run think shoot live gunman chronicles he's asking about but yeah it could be considered a gold source classic i suppose um i mean it runs as a mod these days don't agree with sniping slaves but with 36 health I'm gonna have to do some abnormal things all right this seems to be the bridge right stop shooting earth Yeah, Gunman, last time I played through it was a whole um, a whole playthrough for screenshots for Gold Source Gold. Welcome to my new home. I'm going to be here a long, long time. Gordon. Oh, it's all a dream. Gordon. Is Gina my wife? Gordon. Time to get up, dear. <laughs> It's your first day at Black Mesa. You don't want to be late, do you? Did she say Black Mesa, too? Oh, it's the Dallas ending. It was all a dream. Yep, the end. Well... <laughs> In 2020, I'm not sure I would still call this a classic. It's pretty well put together. You know, for a 1999 mod... Um... But it's pretty well done. I don't know if you see there's a little bit of white streaks on my screen. They don't quite have a a totally black room for the camera here. Yeah, so technically this is by Loki's missions, but I think that's 95% Mr. White. And you get some help from, uh, yeah, some voice acting, um, some miscellaneous things here and there. Um, so this was, you know, vanilla Half-Life. There was no custom code. Very few, if any, custom textures. Um, just creative use of existing Half-Life and, and Zen textures. A couple custom sounds, additional sounds adapted from other games, yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, for the early days, this was solid. Nowadays, I think you could probably do without it. I would still recommend the first one, uh, Xeno Project. Um, well, it's not perfect. It's got a great end set piece, the, the whole rocket battle, um, and approaching the rocket, like across the chasm and everything like that, which I thought was really well handled. This doesn't really have any signature areas, um, that are really memorable other than that. Eh, I would say that big chasm where I, I had to turn on low gravity, but even that wasn't terribly memorable. So, um, yeah, that seems to be the end. 